We need to talk about the ethics and legal considerations relating to technical writing to make sure that you understand what's expected of you and what's legally required of you. First of all, we should take a look at copyright law. Now, copyright law is like the plagiarism in the real world. Just like in the academic world, if you steal somebody else's work, there can be pretty serious repercussions. In the real world, if you steal somebody else's work, it's a legal issue. Now, it's important that you keep in mind that anything that you write for a company that you are employed for belongs to the company. It does not belong to you. So the nice thing about that is that legally you can copy and paste sections from other documents that your company is the copyright holder of and repurpose them for other documents. So for example, if there's a paragraph of information about the company, you can copy that into another document legally that's fine because the company owns both documents. It's important that you're also aware that copyright law does not just extend to text. If you use graphics, if you use video, if you use audio, you need to make sure that legally the copyright holder is okay with you using that. Now, there is a legal sort of loophole called fair use. And fair use allows for people to use uh, other people's work for certain purposes. Um, however, it's a little foggy and um, it, it can be difficult to prove fair use in a courtroom if it actually comes down to it. The basic rule of thumb is to be is to always cite your sources, to make sure that you are encasing any direct quotes in quotation marks, and if you are unsure at all whether what you are doing would be considered fair use, you need to seek permission from the copyright holder in writing so that down the road nobody can sue you. Contract law is also going to be relevant when we're thinking about technical writing. Now, contract law states that anything that you put into a technical document is legally binding. So if you are explicitly stating something in your document, if you are stating that your product will hold up for a year, or money back, guaranteed, those sorts of things are going to be considered express warranties. But what you also need to be aware of is that implied warranties are also going to fall under contract law. So even if you're not explicitly stating something, but you are implying it in your technical document, that still is going to fall under contract law and is still going to be a legally binding issue. So for example, let's suppose that your company is creating a product that includes some pretty um, dangerous chemicals and on the box of the product or perhaps in an advertisement you have an image of a small child playing with that product. That would be a very serious contract law issue because even though you're not stating that this product is appropriate for children, you're implying it with that visual. And if it came down to it, um, you would be held liable in court. A related issue is liability law. Now, liability law is mostly going to apply to the technical documents like instructions or user's manuals. Um, and essentially what it comes down to is that whatever you write in those types of technical documents, you are going to be held liable for.
and that also is going to apply to you not including important information that you should have included. So as the creator of a technical document, you are legally required to do your due diligence. Tell the reader everything that he or she may need to know, assembly, maintenance, what to do after the item no longer works, all of that needs to be included in sufficient detail so that in a court of law, you could say that you did include that information. It's also important that you include the information in such a way that the reader is going to notice it. So if you have any important warnings, you need to make sure that you're signaling those warnings in the text. Use red, use exclamation marks, use warning icons, do whatever you have to do to ensure that the reader notices that information. That way, again, in a court of law, you can prove that you did your due diligence and you attempted to make sure that that information was available to the reader. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about how to make sure that you're using research appropriately. When you're doing research within the technical world, and this is actually true for um, any type of research, you need to make sure that you are following appropriate ethical guidelines. And there are three types of um, no-nos within the research world. You need to make sure that you're not smoothing out problems within your research, and that's called trimming. You need to make sure that you're not only presenting the research that backs up whatever it is that you're trying to convince your reader of. That's called cooking. And of course, you need to make sure that you're not making up false research. Any of these are problematic. You need to provide the full truth. If you find research that doesn't seem to support your ideas, you need to deal with that. You can't just ignore it. You can't just pretend like that research isn't out there. So it all comes down to just basically being honest, being clear, making sure that you're completely telling the truth and not exaggerating and not implying things that are maybe a little bit inaccurate. And um, you need to make sure that you are really using layout and design to help emphasize important information and make sure that the reader notices it. And then, of course, avoid discriminatory language. Be aware that we live in a very multicultural world. Don't say things that might offend certain groups of people. Don't use terms that are going to exclude certain groups of people because they won't be familiar with those terms. And, of course, cite all your sources and always acknowledge any help that you get.